Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, some of our dealers are going to be a real handful. You know them. Another ten? I really don't want to. Would you not meet me in the middle? No. I think I'm all done on that. You're a hard man to make a deal with. When you go to the auction, you never know what's going to happen. At 950. Another phone bidder now. Another thousand pounds on bid. Oh my god. <laughs> are they going to accept the cash offer? Are they going to gamble and come to the auction with the Duke? Either way, they want the real deal. David and the team are in Carnarvon in North Wales. Lisa, nice First to up you. to nice see to Helen you. Gardner is Lisa, who's hoping to do rather well out of this silver cruet set. I'm actually here on behalf of my friend's mum. She picked them up at a car boot and she bought them for £3. <laughs> and I'm hoping to get her about £50. Well, don't let on to Helen how much was paid for them then. So, you've brought a bit of space to the table, have you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your little salt and peppers. Okay, well, I'm actually here on behalf of my friend's mum. It's um, a salt and pepper yeah. set with a little mustard pot. A little mustard. Yeah. Although it's got a mustard spoon in it. I think that could be used for salt or, or, or mustard. But little salt and pepper, a little cruet set. Yeah. Silver. Yeah. Here's the hallmark. Birmingham, 1913, yep. so just before the First World War, yep. when people still had nice tables yep. and everybody would have had to share a little salt cereal like that. Yep. They're very nice, very pretty. Unfortunately, an awful lot of people don't use that type of salt and pepper now. They're yep. all grinding away yep. with the big, <laughs> big long pepper things. <laughs> yeah. But nice little classical style, nicely made. Elegant. Yeah. I don't think the little spoon is silver. I think that's not silver. I yeah. don't see a whole mark on that. A nice little blue glass liner. That was so that the silver would not be corroded yeah. with the salt or, I suppose, the vinegar in the mustard. So, Lisa, why is your friend's mother selling these? Well, she's been having a bit of a clear out and she's got three grandchildren, so... She doesn't I... want to leave these to the grandchildren? No, I don't think so. Let me get some money on the table. There's 20 pounds, 40 pounds. What do you think? Nah. No? No, sorry. I'm not gonna go much higher than that, I'm sorry, Lisa. Okay. Uh, 45 pounds. No, no, I don't think- Here's David giving you some advice. Well, it doesn't sound a lot of money, Lisa, does it? No. Both our independent value and auctioneer, they've said 30 to 50. Okay. Can we squeeze another fiver out of you? I'm going to be very ruthless here, David. I think they're so difficult to sell. Yeah. They're lovely, they should be worth more money, yeah. but they're not. Okay, where did you get it from? Is it a family piece? It was my friend's mum, she bought it from a car boot. Okay, well interesting. What did she pay in a car boot sale? Three pound. <laughs> What can one do? Well, you know, I never get to I can never say it. <laughs> I'm going to say to you, take the profit. I was hoping to say to you... Come to auction. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going out for an afternoon to the auction if you'd want to go. David! <laughs> Don't you be charmed by that, David Dickinson. Now, you can go to auction and have a nice day out, and maybe you'll get a little bit more money. The choice, my dear, now is going to be yours. I think that's quite a fair offer. Okay. Yeah. Gonna have a deal? Yeah, it's gonna be a deal. Okay, my pleasure. Nice to meet you. Nice Lisa. to meet you too. Thank you. Intrinsic value with the silver. Hopefully I'll make a fiver. Only five pounds? That's nothing compared to Lisa's forty-two pound profit. Simon Schneider's been joined by Garant. Hey, I've bought in uh, some walking canes today. I'm looking for around about 200 for them. Value-wise, sort of around 150, 200 pound. And I would really like to buy these. I hope I get the opportunity to do so. Better get your cash out then, Simon. Five walking sticks? Yes. How did you come across these? Um, well, these have been my grandfather's for, for years and years since I can remember. I mean, he's 80 years old now and he's had them, you know, for most of his life. And did your grandfather travel abroad? Well, yeah, I mean, he was in the war and um, he's travelled quite a bit. 
And do you know if he sort of acquired these abroad? I'm not 100% sure. I think he's inherited some of them. The reason I ask is because I think they're all started off life far, far away from where we are today. Yes. We've got three bamboo walking sticks here, which is this one, this one and this one. Yep. This one's really nice because it's been carved with this decoration of fish going all the way up it. I would suggest probably started off life in Japan around the end of the 19th or beginning of the 20th century, so yep. about 100 years old. These are very nice quality carvings that take a lot of time and are quite skillfully done. Yeah. So if you think about it, you know, someone sat there with a stick of bamboo yeah. and they've turned it into a, a really nice item. Absolutely, yeah. Now, you don't know anything about this one, do you? Um, no, I mean, I've always thought, because th the markings here, that exactly. it opens in some way or another, but I've, You've I've, never managed to I've open it. I've never managed to open it, and I was scared of actually damaging it if right. I tried. Either an ebony or some type of Indian hardwood. Yeah. You would think there would be some sort of compartment yeah. Yeah, would, underneath yeah. them, but I'm scared right. to force yeah. it open. I think we just have to accept that it is what it is. Yeah. And then finally, we get to this one, which is Malacca. Have you ever looked at this closely? Well, I've opened it up and I've look at the matches and the little compartments at the bottom, yeah. Exactly. So what you've got with this, you've actually got two bits that open on it. We've got a Vesta. It's a, a match holder, yeah. which is quite unusual in itself. So then we do that back up. Um, as well as that, you've got inside it a little wick, almost like a candle yeah. or a taper stick, if you like, which you could light as well. So. I've never seen one of those on a walking stick before. Now, a lot of people collect walking sticks and anything that's sort of got a dual purpose yeah. makes it a little bit more unusual. So definitely adds to the value of it. So I like them. And I would like to pay you 50, 100, 150 pound. No, I can't let them go for that. My life wouldn't be worth living. You wouldn't be, oh, well, no. we can't have that, no. can we? No. 200 pounds. Uh, I'm sure you can squeeze a bit more out here. Yeah. Let's get David's opinion and see what he thinks. How much is on the table? 200. The it's prize is here. This is unusual. We've got two estimations, 150 to 2, 180 to 250. Yeah. So you're kind of mid-estimate well, on the better I'm prepared estimate. to put down another 20 pound and make it 220. Is it worth going to the auction to get more than 250? Because we need more than 250 to make it worth your while. Yes, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to say, think about it. 220. Is that your final offer? Is that? Well, I'd like it to be because obviously I want to make a profit on them. Um, I think I'm being very fair. I'm sure you'd get a bit more out of you. I know you're tempted. Look. This is going to be my final offer. Two hundred and forty pounds. It's up to you now. It's your decision. Yeah. Okay. That's a deal. Thank you very much for bringing in a very interesting lot. Thank you very much. Well done. Your grandparents will be very pleased. Now Michael Hogburn's turning his nose up at Pat's piece of pottery. A Staffordshire flatback. I haven't seen one for years. They are just so old-fashioned nowadays. I'm feeling a bit nervous and I've seen hockey on the TV many times and I think it's very stingy. Come on Pat, let's turn Scrooge's mood around. Staffordshire flatback? Yes. How long have you owned this one? Well, I've owned this is about 30 years and it was in my mother's house but the lady that did own this she gave it to my mother she was 96 when she yeah. gave it to my mother wow it's very very it's old a family there. piece then really yes so why are you selling it today well i've got no room for it really no it doesn't go with my furniture you know what i mean the staffordshire factory in itself they did a lot of this sort of stuff the yeah. flat backs these are called because it's got a flat back when you put them on the mantelpiece they would go flat against the wall and not fall off of the mantle. Great idea. That hole there is for when they fired it so it didn't crack. And this front piece here is all hand painted. And the thing about Staffordshire as a factory, it's a generic term for the whole of Staffordshire. This could have been made anywhere in Staffordshire. Yeah. And in the 
early 1800s to the 1830s and 40s, Staffordshire was painted by children. Yeah. Get paid peanuts for it. Yeah. And this was really the first sort of ornament, decorative items yes. that most families could afford because the children were making them. So they were very cheap to buy. Mm. And they're quite crude. And when I say crude, that is the style of Staffordshire. It is crude. Crude means like this face is not painted very well. Yeah. And you know, there's a few splashes around and yeah, things like that. Yeah. This one is a late one. This dates to about 1900, maybe 1920, yes. around that way. Mm -hmm. Really, these are so hard to move on in the market nowadays, because like you, no one really wants this sort of thing anymore. Mm. But it's in good condition, isn't it? It's in perfect condition. Perfect condition. It's in perfect yeah. condition. All about the money. Well, what will you offer me for it? I would like to give you for this 20 pounds. No way, I'll take 20 pounds. You've got higher expectations oh, than yes, that, haven't you? Oh, yes, a lot higher, yeah. I'll go 25. You're not near. I think I'm all done on that. £25. If it was uh, worth any more and I could sell it for a lot more, I would be paying more. I'm but sure you'll sell it for more than that, won't you? Do you know what? I'm going to struggle to get 40 quid for that. <laughs> would you like it to go to auction? Give me 40 for this and I'll take it. No. I can't, I really can't pay any more than £25. That's a bit tight, isn't it? I don't like to be mean, Pat, but the thing is, you've got to think about me, I'm not here as a collector, I'm here as a dealer. Yeah, it's And if I buy something, I've got to sell it. Give me a fiver. I'll give you 25. Oh, you're a hard man to make a deal with. Very hard. You're a hard woman trying to make me give yeah, you another fiver. That's a fiver. I wouldn't get a pack of the it's If it's all about a fiver. There you are. That's the hardest favour I've ever tried to get out of anybody. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> it's the hardest deal I've done ever. <laughs>Great piece of weaponry just arrived. Love buying swords. Gonna want to buy this, I think. Sounds promising. Let's see if you put up a fight for it. Rianne, welcome to the Hi show. Anne, and you were probably you. one of the last people I'd expect to bring me in a sword. So, this is a family piece, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's my nan's. Your nan's? My nan's, yeah. Not even your granddad's? Nope, my nan's. <laughs> <laughs> so, swords pass down the female line in yeah, this family, do they? Yeah, quite a fierce family. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the history? I'm not really sure. My nan said she bought it about 30 years ago in an auction all right. uh, with a job lot of swords and she's got them all on her wall at home. So she genuinely does yeah. love military yeah. and swords and yeah. things. She's got rifles, um, gunpowder things, everything. Great, I love her. I mean, it's clearly a 19th century one. We've got some sort of military insignia on the, on the hilt here. Mm -hmm. um, but without research, I'm not going to be able to tell you the regiment or anything else like that. We've got the scabbard, which I'm assuming is the original one to the sword. Um, I have to say though, it's lost a bit, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit lost there. I don't know if your, your grand's told you, the handle on the hilt here, this is this is actually snake skin. Oh, right. Um, or you sometimes hear the word chagrin. So you've got coils of brass and, and snake skin, and that gives the, the hilt on there. Now with swords, it's all about condition, condition, condition. Yeah. And I have to say, this isn't in the best condition. The swords I particularly love are the beautiful naval swords that you get and they yeah. are fetching a lot of money. Has she got any naval swords? I'm not too sure. You don't know what's hanging up there? I'll give you a ring there. if she asks. <laughs> <laughs> Good girl. I like you, Rianne. So, is there any special um, thing that the money's going to go for? We're trying to drag Nan into the 21st century and we would like to see her when we call her. So, we'd like to buy her a tablet computer. She calls it a tappy thing. Aww. So, she wants the money for a tappy thing or towards a tappy thing. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, yeah, my bid to you and to your gran is 20, 40, 60 pounds. It's a bit low. It is and it isn't. I buy and sell swords a lot and this for me to sell is about 80 and if I'm lucky on a good day, it's about 100 quid. David, what do you think? Well, <laughs> the estimation is basically between 80 to 120. Now, these swords are decoration value. People use them as wall pieces. There's a bit of corrosion on this. There is a little bit of damage to the scabbard. And because of that, because of its visual appeal, I'm going to say it affects it. Now, you can go to auction, and I'll be very happy to take you along there. But 60 quid in your purse today can save a bit of heartache. That might not sell at auction with a reserve of 80. He's that, good. He's good. He knows what he's talking about, that boy. Um, but that is my offer. I buy and sell these all day long, and I know it's 80 quid's worth. Would you not meet me in the middle, go 70? No, and I know I'm probably only buying the case of the computer that you want. I fully appreciate that. But th honestly, that's market value, Rianne. I can't go anymore. You will accept my offer. <laughs> all right, we've got a deal. Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> I thought it was fair considering the condition of the piece and it's going towards a good home. This is going to get Nan a computer, hopefully. I bet you'll never guess where Pat picked up this lovely looking item. It's a writing desk, late 18th century. I'd like at least £50 for it. Come on, Pat, spill the beans. Where did you get this lovely box? Um, it was on a rubbish tip. Never. Yeah, due to be burnt. When yes. was this? About 40 years ago. Oh, you've had it for 40 yes. years. Oh. <laughs> so did you clean it up? Yes. Uh -huh. the, the box is made of very nice exotic rosewood. Yeah. Rosewood was a wood that was used extensively in yes. the late 18th, right through the 19th century. This would have been made for somebody that, you know, had, had quite a bit of money, I would have thought. There's a bit of inlay off here. Yes. Let's open it up and have a look. So this comes down to be a little writing desk. Uh -huh. So people in the 19th century wrote millions yes. of letters and they took their writing box wherever they went with them. Uh -huh. This would have been a gentleman's box and they would have had all their secret papers yeah. and their little secret drawers. Look at this little ink well. The only thing is, unfortunately, today people don't write letters. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? That's yeah. for, the, for your pencils and pens. Right. And is there a secret drawer in it? Yeah, how this for? This pulls up. Yeah. It all goes back together. Oh, again. there it is, the whole thing. Look at all the little drawers. Oh, that's nice. I quite like that. So they'd keep all the little secrets. So if you were travelling, yes. you could put all your little sovereigns in there, your little bits of jewellery. Well, it's a very handsome box. As I say, unfortunately, people are not writing letters. So let me put some money on the table. There's 20. There's £40 for your box. What do you think about that? No. No? no. Here's David. He's going to give you some ah. advice. Right. Now, I've got a 40 to 50, and then I've got a 60 to 100. Well, I think if it was in superb condition, and the climate today in the sale room, I'd go with the 60 to 100, yeah. but it's not. And so I'm going to say there's about 50 quid's worth here, even though, my love, I know you've put a lot of energy and a lot of, a lot of love, maybe hours, toiling away at restoring this. Uh -huh. so it's been a handsome box. It has. On the table is £40. It isn't worth a great deal more. I would have said perhaps another 10 or 15 quid more. Or take it to auction. I'd be delighted to come with you. And you never know, your handiwork may suddenly turn out to be very well received. Thank you. I would like to offer you more money because it should be worth a lot more money. Yeah. But I'm unfortunately going to stick at my £40. I know it's a mean offer. You wouldn't go up to fit another 10. I really don't want to. So I'm going to have to leave the decision up to you. Nice day out with David or yeah, take have, my 40 I'll have a quid. nice day out with David, I think. I think that's a very good <laughs> choice. <laughs> I hope that you do well in auction with it. Thank, well, thank you very much. Thank you. It's 
worth a lot more, but who's going to pay it? Hopefully someone in the sale room will. Auctioneer Simon Bauer is ready to go. Now, you've done a bit of a restoration job on it yourself. You've put a bit of passion and a bit of heart into it, and you've done as best as you can. It's here in the sale room. There is a reserve of 50 quid. The question is, is all that hard work going to pay off? Well, I hope so, David, because I want it for the Rolt Nursing Home in Welsh Hall. OK, hopefully we'll be able to make a reasonable price to give to this nursing home. Lot 50, then, is the Rosewood Slope. The Rosewood Slope being auctioned for charity. All the proceeds going to a local charity, ladies and gentlemen, so dig deep. Stand around him, £80 on him, surely. 80 60 30 pounds I've got, thank you sir. 30, 30 pounds, pounds. we're starting. 35, at 35 pounds I'm bid at 40. 45, 50, at 50 pounds I'm bid at 55, 60. 60, 65, no commission 65, to be taken off. 70, 70 pounds I'm bid, 70 I'm bid worth another. At 70 pounds Doing well. I'm bid. At 70 in a way then quickly. Gavel has gone down at £70. What do you think about the result? Brilliant. No deduction. The generosity of the auctioneer. You're taking the whole 70 and it's going to the Rout nursing home. Are you happy? Very happy. And I'm happy too. Yeah, that was well, thank the... you, Dave. It's a pleasure. And that was the real deal. Well done, Pat. £70 is on its way to a very worthy cause. Coming up, the dealers are presented with some real gems. I think they're really, really pretty. Yes. Yeah. The more I look at it, the more I like it. David looks at these. His knees are starting to go weak. <laughs> but which one will truly sparkle? <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The show is coming from North Wales and we are in the picturesque town of Carnarvon. Very nice. Next up to see Simon is Pauline. Today I brought in a Copenhagen jug and I'd like in the region of £400. I'd like to pay sort of 253 for it, but I might be prepared, might be prepared to go a little further. Well, Pauline certainly hopes so. Now you've brought in this unusual jug, Pauline? Yes. How did you come to own this? It's been in the family for about 40 or 50 years. Um, it was passed down from my grandma's best friend. Something that you've had out on display, or has it been tucked away? No, or? I've tucked it away. I don't like it. You don't like no, it? No, I don't like it. I what think it's don't idiots. You... <laughs> Fair enough. I actually like it. I'm a little confused by it, though. Right. Because what we've got here is quite a classical jug with a sort of very sort of classical romantic scene of a semi-naked woman. Almost, they're almost like angels, aren't yeah. they? What's confusing about it? is you've got this applied silver work on top of it, which is very sort of indicative of the Art Nouveau period, sort of about 1900, 1910. And right. it's in a totally different style to the sort of classicalness of, of the rest of it. Right. And it shouldn't work, but I think it actually does. Yeah. So I think it's quite charming. Do you know where this was made? Denmark. Denmark, it's yeah. Danish. It's made by a factory called Royal Copenhagen. Yeah. We can see it's got a little back stamp here. I suppose the English equivalent of Royal Copenhagen would be something like Royal Worcester. It's, right. it's always been quite expensive. Most importantly of all, it's in fantastic condition. Mm. I can't see a blemish on it. Mind you, I'm half so, blind. <laughs> Do you think it started off life without the silver then and that was added? No, I, I don't think so. I think it probably has been produced in the factory like this. Now it's very difficult to do apply silver to porcelain. I mean if you can imagine that it's all silver, very thinly beaten and then applied to this and you've got this sort of fretwork here yeah. and then this floral decoration that runs down from the handle. The quality of it I think is very very good. The more I look at it the more I like it. Now it's good for you because that means the yes, more I'm that, likely to pay yes, for it. Yes that was what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get some money out and I'm going to try and tempt you. <laughs> 50 pound wouldn't be enough, would it? No. 100 pound wouldn't be enough, would it? 150 pound wouldn't be no. enough. I don't think it would be. No. I'm not even sure 200 pound would be enough. 220 pound, 240 pound. More. No. More. Well, this isn't Oliver. <laughs> 
Oh, he loves it. <laughs> Has he already told you he loves Royal Copenhagen? Yes, I gathered that one. First of all, auctioneer two to three. Independent values have gone three to four. It's not a bad offer that's on the table, but I do think it's worth a little bit more. I will say to you, he's the best buyer in the room today for this. If it was anyone else, it could be less. Okay, thank you, David. I do like this, and I would like to buy it. Let's move them out of the way. 250. Not put a bit more on. This is it. You've got to say yes now. <laughs> 270 pounds. Another fiver. A fiver? Would yeah. a fiver make that much difference? Yes. I shall see if I can dig a fiver <laughs> out of my pocket. £275 for your Royal Copenhagen jug. You shake my hand and have a deal? Yes. Thank you so much for bringing it in. I really like okay, it. Okay, thanks very Thank much. You. Thank you. I decided to take the £275 because I don't think I'd have got the £400 at auction. I can see little pound signs, to be honest with you. I think I'm going to get a decent profit out of that. Oh, you think you've got a bargain there, Simon? We'll see. Back at Karen's table, she's Good with Roy. How much do you Roy want Rogers. for your earrings? Oh, thousands. Absolutely thousands. Um, I suppose 400, 4 to 500, somewhere around there would be good. Will Karen rate them as highly? Well, Roy, what are you doing bringing me in a pair of gorgeous little earrings? Well, they've been handed down from mother to mother. My grandmother had them. My Oh, I'd like to say that, but I can't. No, I bought them at auction, actually. <laughs> um, I, I was believing you. I was there. Why are you buying them at auction? Well, I bought them for my wife. Oh, fair enough. But unfortunately, because of the screw-in type, they don't fit. Oh, a little bit of a them. technicality. Yeah, yeah, that's all. And how long ago did you buy them, Roy? I think it was about 18 months, two years ago. Oh, so quite fresh. They are really, really pretty, I have to say. And I'm sure you know they're aquamarine. They've got tiny little seed pearls. Mm -hmm. They're Edwardian in age, so just after the turn of the 20th century, but surprisingly only on nine karat gold. Is that unusual then for that? Well, I just thought they were pretty enough yes. that they would have been on... Because they hang nicely, don't they? they, they yeah, they're so them. sweet. I thought they were pretty enough that they would have um, been on 18 karat gold, yeah. but so that slightly surprises me. And of course, the real bugbear is, is the, is the fact that they're the old-fashioned screw yeah. mechanism as opposed to, to the, the one pins. for pierced earrings and I'm and your wife's got pierced ears. Yes, yes. Okay. Well I haven't. I'm probably, oh, they I'm are probably the only way. one was, in the country that's sold them had... already then. <laughs> I think they're really, really pretty. Yes. Um and it's all a question of how I value them and how much I'm gonna offer you. Mm. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 120. Roy! Ooh, shaking of the no heads. Nowhere near, Kevin. Ooh, no the eyes near. in the air as well. No near. 140. Long way off. All right, Let, let's cut to the chase here. What did you pay for them? I paid 280 quid for them. Did you? So I want a small profit on that and I'll be happy. You want a small profit on 280? I think they're worth every penny of that. You know that. You know that. Right, you just gained yourself another 20 quid. <laughs> 160. I think we're a long yeah, way we're apart a long way here, aren't we? Kevin. We're definitely up. Well, David. I don't think that's enough, Karen, because they're not the easiest things in the world to sell earrings, but I think they are very elegant. They're nicely cased, clean, quality, smart, stylish. I have two estimations 280 to 320, 300 to 500. Maybe the 500 end is being rather ambitious. I don't think that is enough money on the table, so I think they're one for auction. Thank you. So I'm a bit light, in other yes. words. Yes. Uh, 180, 200, 220, and this is my last amount going down. 240 pounds. You don't really mean that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I might. You know you want them. <laughs> I do. I do want them. But I want a profit as well. well I'm sure you, you, <laughs> you've got clients that'd be willing to pay 350 for those. This is my last bid. £250. No, I think we'll have to go to auction. I've tried, haven't I? We'll give them a whirl, see what happens. Okay. 
Thank you very much. All right. Good luck. The earrings are going to auction. Am I bothered? Yes, I really wanted them. Well, you've lost them now, Karen. But will Roy be able to get back the £280 he paid for them? On the dealer's day, you sat down with Karen Dalmeni. She offered you 250 quid. Yeah. Why did you turn that down? I thought they were worth a little bit more. I was looking at about £300. OK. They are coming up now. Are they going to make it? £300 plus? Well, we're going to find out. One, two, five. There we are, these beautiful pair of aquamarine earrings, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful quality, aren't they? Start me on them, 400 pounds. 300 then, 200 pounds, and bid straight in at 200 pounds. Straight in at 200 pounds, 200 good start. Bid. Beautiful pair of earrings, 220 on the net, at 220, 240. At 240, and bid 260. 260. At 260, 280. The 280 bid, at 280 bid. They're just under the reserve. 300 now then, no one at all, 300 and bid. 300, they've got the 300 pounds. 300 pounds, I'll get 20 again. It's on the net then at three hundred pounds. Are we twenty? Cheaper. Yeah. They are. They're realistic. Up at three hundred pounds and sold and away quickly. Okay, gavel's gone down at three hundred pounds, right on the reserve. That's always the gamble when you yeah. come to auction. We've got the commission to take off. I think it's two hundred and forty-six. <laughs> You're just a little bit below it. What's your reaction? A little disappointed, David, that it didn't make a little bit more, but well, there again. Well, when you think about it, you bought them, yeah. you know, you've I had the use of them, so We're on the day, even. you haven't done bad. Karen, you offered £250, and that was the real deal. Coming up. 250 250 won't buy one of those. Six to £800 is the estimation. But are they too rich for hockey? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The den has been buzzing all day and there's time for one more deal. Denise has put something sparkly in front of Hoggy. I brought in some Art Deco hair grips and I'm hoping to get 600 for them. This next item is absolutely stunning. All singing, all dancing. Gonna have a good old go. Wallet at the ready, Hoggy. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. What do you know about them? They're my partner's grandmother's and he gave them to me Did he? about six years ago. Have you ever worn them? No, no, gosh, no. They've been in the drawer in a biscuit tin. Not with your bourbons? No. Thank goodness <laughs> no. for that. They are the epitome of Art Deco. Mm. If you think of Tutankhamun and that 1920s period where everything was stylized and these are just all singing or dancing they really are a nice pair yeah. this is made of horn yeah and this little rascal at the end here is diamonds and i think that could be platinum we can't test it because it's so small it's either platinum white gold definitely not silver okay and when you look at the quality Names are jumping at me, although they're not marked. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking Tiffany, I'm thinking Cartier. They're up there with the top league. Why are you selling them? Oh, I can't wear them because I'm See. afraid to break them because they're so delicate. That is one of the things with them, they are very delicate. Mm -hmm. And what could you do with them? You know, it's not the easiest thing to wear all the time, is it? But no, it's a really no. nice show. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, money time. And I'd like to offer you. 50, 100, 50, 200 quid, 100 pound each. No way, no. I know they're worth a lot more than that. They could be worth a lot more than that, but I can't attribute a name to them or anything. They've got no maker's names on them. Am I close? No. <laughs> no? No. 250? No, sorry, no. Tepid. David, I, I think, think so. I might need help on this one. Well, Denise, do not be dismayed. Because David looks at these, his knees are starting to go weak. I've had 30 years experience in this business. There is not a name on that, but I don't need a name because they tell me all about themselves. They say, I was produced by one of the greatest jewelers in the world. I'm sure it smacks all over, ladies of style, ladies of elegance. 250 won't buy one of those. 
six to eight hundred pounds is the estimation with our auctioneers and independent valuers. They're just absolutely fabulous. Get them to the auction, that's where they must go. Mm -hmm. Let's see who picks those up. They just got it and they speak to me, go to auction. Okay, thank you. I think David likes them. <laughs> I do too. So. I like them as well, yeah. so well, don't get me wrong. Mm. And I'm feeling meaner now that David said all that. <laughs> I'm gonna try and tempt you. 300, 350, 400 is where I'm at with them. What would you like to do? Take them to auction, please. Do you know what? I think you're 100% right. Okay. Once you get the clients on that from the internet, yeah. and I'm going to get egg on my face. Oh, thank you. I wish you luck, Denise. Thank Thanks you. for coming on. Lovely thank item. You. They will do so well at auction. I'll be surprised if they don't do four figures. You'll be kicking yourself if they do, Hoggy. And David's got some even better news about the hair slides that could make them even more desirable. We believe it's Cartier. There is a series of numbers, and the numbers that are on there makes us think that these are Cartier. Okay. Excited? Yes. Any idea what you're going to do if you sell these with the money? Um, well, I'm going to Australia in about two months, so it will come in handy. Say no more. Good day, Australia. Mm -hmm. Let's hope we can put some money towards the trip. I'm expecting good things. Good. Lot number 80, the Cartier diamond set hair combs in the blonde horn, and just top, top quality, aren't they? A thousand pounds, I should be asking you here. A thousand, 800 pounds then. 500 pounds with me at 500 pounds. They're in at five. 550, at 550 on the phone at 550. 600 with me, 650. 700 with me at 700 pounds i'm bid 750 800 with me at 800 pounds 850 it's on the phone now at 850 nets out as well at 850 pounds i'm bid 900 on the phone again another phone bidder now bidding against an original phone bidder at 950 a thousand with geraint on the phone there is a thousand pounds now <laughs> at 1011 at 1200 pounds i'm bid 1300 now the 1300 that's better they're worth every penny of that <laughs> 1400 1500 1500 pounds i'm bid 1006 with garrett 1006 1007 1008 there are two phone bidders competing with each other 1009 2,000 pounds I'm bid at 2,001. 2,100 pounds. Quality will out. Always remember that. 2,002 I'm bid. 2,003. At 2,003 I'm bid. 2,004. 2,004. They're not finished yet. 25. 25 I'm bid now with Howell. 26. 2,006 I'm bid. At 2,600 pounds. Hammers up then. At 2,000. Oh my God. <laughs> gavel has gone down the words i heard you say was oh my god oh my god we've got commission to take off okay. i make that two thousand three hundred and forty pounds i've got hold of you i'm supporting you now thank give you. me your first impression oh my god that's brilliant thank you brilliant yes they are superb they are quality and quality will not let you down and that is the real deal wow denise what a fantastic result Maybe our dealers need to take note. Hello, Pat, how Hello. are you? Hockey's instinct was Hi, right you. about the flat back. I might make a small profit. I doubt it. In fact, he made a loss. Nice to meet you. Helen speculated nice on the silver cruet you. set. Intrinsic value with the silver. Hopefully I'll make a fiver. And she wasn't far off. Well, Karen yeah, knew exactly what she was talking about with the sword. I buy and sell these all day long and I know it's 80 quid's worth. Having laid out £60, she was right on the money. But Simon was top dog today. He made more than all the other dealers put together. He snapped up the Copenhagen jug for £275. I can see little pound signs, to be honest with you. And he did 25 of them. And he was even more successful with the walking sticks. Novelty is a big thing. I think it's always worth paying for something unusual. Deal. Thank you And his offer of 240 in. was rewarded with a tidy profit. However, it was seller Denise who was head and shoulders above everyone else today. 
How pleased is she that she turned down Hoggy's £400 for her hair slides? Do you know what? I think you're 100% right. And gambled at auction. Then take home £2,340. Fabulous price. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.